Summer Sabbath. How do we find time to refresh in the summer? Sundays used to be the day that most people took for Sabbath. On Sundays, when I was growing up, my father, who was not much of a churchgoer, would sit on Sundays. After puttering around in the garden, having done all his pruning and mowing on Saturday, by the time I returned from church with my mother, my father would be sitting on the back patio in his patio chair, smoking on his corn cob pipe. He might be reading the newspaper, but most likely he would be sitting and, as he called, cogitating life. He could sit like that for the whole afternoon. One thing I do remember about Sundays growing up is they were agenda-less. No things to do, no appointments to keep, no plans all day long. It's hard to find that time these days. Maybe we don't know how to find that time. We live a frenzied seven-day-a-week life of appointments and events. I find in the summer the practice of gardening a way to reclaim open space, a genderless time. Wendell Berry has written a poem called Sabbaths. In it, he says, By our 10,000 days of work, harvest will fill the barn. For that the hand must ache, the face must sweat. And yet no leaf or grain is filled by work of ours. The field is tilled and left to grace. That we may reap, great work is done while we're asleep. The field is tilled and left to grace. One of the qualities that I love about gardening is that working with the natural world requires time to let grace do its work. With our late winter and rainy spring, last weekend I began working with great earnest on my garden, planting tomato plants, basil, and more. And each year I buy seed packets with every intention of growing some plants from seed. There's something so very satisfying about planting from seed and seeing the plants grow through all their stages and then harvesting the fruit of the vine, then eating it, whether in homemade pesto or big tomato sandwich. Some years I blast right past the seed process because it's so much easier and quicker to just buy the plants and plant them in the ground. But this year I did get my seeds into starter parts. And that's where you learn about Sabbath. I planted the pots and then put them in a warm place with enough moisture. Then I wait. There's nothing to do but wait. Each morning, each afternoon, I check on the pots. And after a few days, small sprouts of green leaves start to show. But still, I have to wait. Wait until the plants are big enough to survive planting in the ground. More waiting, and so it goes. And somehow with this force waiting on my eager gardening self, I start to move ever so slowly into the same rhythm as the seeds in the soil. Maybe I can wait a bit for that email or phone call or decision. Maybe I can just sit a spell on the deck and cogitate life. And when I'm able to do that, a peace settles in my heart for a time. That is what I call Sabbath. Small enough, local enough for me to return to it again and again. Not oppressive or dogmatic. Just a gentle invitation to sit and let God's grace surround me flow over me, cover me. The field is tilled and left to grace.